Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about how to build an Android data science portfolio that will help you to get hired in data science. If you are already into data science or if you are already into a data related job, this video will definitely help you to get a better job opportunity. Having an Android data science portfolio is not only useful in order to get better job opportunities or uh, get into data science. It is very useful in order to transform you into a better data scientist. I'm going to exactly help you understand what are all those different options that are available to you in order to build a data science portfolio for yourself. I've spoken to a lot of people who are trying to get into data science or who have just started their career in data science. Most of them think that having hobby projects is your data science portfolio. Having project is definitely a part of your portfolio, but there is a lot more than having just projects to it. I will exactly tell you what are all those different options and I explain you how to work on those options and build a better profile for yourself. So now before getting into those options, why is it important to have a good data science portfolio? Why not just a resume? To understand better about the importance of having a good portfolio, maybe open a LinkedIn job, take any job post and then see how many applicants are there for that particular job post. Almost any data science opportunity that if you take, there will be at least 10 its applicants. There will definitely be some job post where there are as many as 100 its applicants or even 200 its applicants. So data science is very competitive field. So in order to make sure the recruiter notices your resume, you need to know, you need to, like you need to understand that having a good resume is just not sufficient. You need to have a good data science portfolio. The other important reason is most of these technical recruiters do not have enough time to speak to each and every one of the job applicant. So they need to make a decision based on whatever information that is, is available in front of them. So what you need to do is you need to provide as many information as possible about you, not only in your resume, but also online to gain the confidence of these recruiters. That is really important to ensure that you are getting shortlisted in an job applicant application. So now having understood like why it is important to have a good data science portfolio. Now let's talk about what are all those various options that are available for us to build an Android portfolio. The various op options that are available for us are like number one is a blot. Having a blot is definitely going to help in building your profile. The second one is having projects on your debt repository. There is a lot more than having just projects in your debt repository. I'm going to explain you each one of them in detail, like how to build an impressive profile in debt repository as well. The third option is uh, Tadl. So Tadl is an amazing platform, which is not only useful to participate in competition, but there is a lot more than that. Uh, there is plenty of opportunity for you on, like in Tadl to build your profile as a data scientist. The fourth one is mentoring. So it doesn't matter like how much experience you have, even if you have just started your career in data science or you have completed maybe a course in data science, you can be really helpful for people who is some who is looking forward to start something. So so you can mentor someone who is trying to learn and it can be can be very useful for you as well. I will explain exactly how it will be useful. The fifth option is publishing paper. So publishing paper is not just for someone who has done uh, their PhD or someone who is looking forward to do their PhD. So anyone who is interested in a research career can publish a research paper and there are few options that are available for you to publish and research work. So I'm going to explain you about those options and you can pick up an option that is, that is more aligned to your career goals. The sixth one is becoming a technical reviewer. So there is plenty of opportunities for you to uh, earn as well as for you to gain by being a technical reviewer. So let's uh, talk about all these options in detail to understand how you can build a better data science portfolio. The first one on the list is having a blog for yourself. So having a blog is not reserved for people who are already experienced in data science it doesn't matter whether you are learning data science or whether you have just started your career in data science, you can write about any topic. So if I take blot, 
there is uh, like three different types of blot like mostly the one is uh, the first one is tutorial based blot let's say you have built something that like you have built your first data science model you want to share your experience with other other people who are trying to learn to build their first model you can definitely write a tutorial blot about building your first data science model so compared with someone who has like maybe 10 years of experience who writes about building and first data science model your blog will be much more informative why because you are someone who's just started you would have had a lot of questions a lot of doubts and lots of confusions that you will be able to better clarify to people who are trying to learn rather than someone who is already 10 years in who has 10 years of experience in data science who would have maybe totally forgotten about the basic questions that will come up in the mind of someone who's trying to learn data science so you will be in a better position to write maybe those kinds of blogs the second one is uh, like experience based blog if you have experienced a new tool in data science you can write about the, those experiences you can talk about the uh, the features of those particular tools or platform that can be very helpful for people who are trying to learn that particular platform the third option is uh, informative blogs so if you have an uh, specific knowledge about a particular topic in data science you can write and blog about the particular topic that can be very helpful for people who are trying to learn about that particular topic so writing blog is not reserved for people who are expert in a particular field anyone can write so data science is a huge field there are like plenty of people who want to understand about any topic that you can think of so it doesn't matter whether you are an expert or not if you have an idea to write about something don't hesitate just start and write it the second option uh, the second option is uh, having a good uh, data repository profile so you need to understand here it is not important like how many projects that you have in your data repository or it doesn't matter how frequently you uh, push content into your rep repository like uh, how green your grid is in your Reddit repository. It doesn't matter. What is important is what, how your profile is, how informative is your profile is. So in Reddit, there is an option to customize your profile. You can provide a lot more information about yourself and about the projects that are present in your Reddit repository. So usually the technical recruiters do not have the knowledge about like the data science concepts. So if your profile is quite impressive enough if your profile is quite clear enough in explaining someone who is new to data science it will be very helpful for people like the technical recruiters who do not have much data science background but if you are able to make them understand about your profile they will be much more confident in recommending your profile rather than someone who has like 100 projects but without any documentation so it is important to have a good profile and it is also important to have a good documentation about your projects. So for each one of your projects, you need to have a readme page where you publish, uh, you write about like what the project is about, what is the purpose, what is an objective that you are trying to achieve, to whom that particular project can be helpful, what are all those various references that you made use of in creating this particular project. So, so having project in the repository has a lot more than just like having the scripts in, in your edit repository so you need to understand that and you need to make sure that you build and you document your, uh, your, your projects and your profile in a manner that is very useful for someone who is coming from a non data science background to read and understand. The third option is the Tadl platform. So Tadl platform is not only for people who are trying to participate in various title competition there is a lot more than title competitions so you can uh, you can participate by uh, like uh, maybe publishing and data set on title that can be helpful for people who are trying to look to look forward to build a new project on a new data set so if you are able to get an interesting data set you can share it with the other fellow data scient uh, scientist and data science enthusiast who are trying to get into data science you can maybe publish your uh, notebook about um, let, let's say your first implementation of an data science analysis or a data science uh, model 
that can be helpful for other people who are trying to get into data science and you can participate in the com in the community by uh, responding to various questions asked by other people by doing all these what you what is happening is you are creating and profile like uh, in Kaggle. the next one is mentoring so mentoring is not only for people who is an expert in data science or who has 10 years of experience in data science so in general what everyone would suggest is uh, like you need to have a mentor who is three to four years ahead of you in the career so if you have a mentor who is let's say like 15 years more experience or 20 years more experience they're not going to be much of an help to you because they won't be able to understand some of your questions so the most ideal one is to have a mentor who is maybe three to four years ahead of you in your career and they can provide you some valuable feedback that will be very helpful for you to improve your journey as a data scientist so it doesn't matter like to uh, like it doesn't matter how much experience you have if you have just started your career in data science you can be helpful for someone who's trying to learn data science if you have a completed and course in data science you can be helpful to people who's trying to learn that particular course so mentoring is very important because it helps you to gain some key skills like a leadership and coaching which is very important when you have a team by yourself so have like, being a mentor will be a win-win situation for both you as a mentor and to the person who is trying to learn by being your mentee so it is definitely a good opportunity to get some uh, very useful skill sets that will be very helpful in your career in data science the fifth one is a publishing paper so publishing paper is not just for people who are doing their PhDs or who have completed their PhDs so it can be it can be done by anyone who is interested in publishing a particular paper so there are various options under publishing as well like similar to blogs you can publish and finding like let's say you work on an interesting analysis and you want to share the finding with the other people you can write a paper about your finding like how you did the analysis how you were able to identify an insight that is quite interesting and you can talk about those insights to uh, uh, to the other people through an publication you can write about a particular concept let's say you are learning about a recommendation system you understand how it works how it is useful in improving the experience of a uh, particular customer and let's say you have a concept in your mind you can write about the particular concept that can be very useful in taking the recommendation systems from the current level to a level which uh, can enhance the customer experience for example so those are uh, concept based publication where you have a concept in your mind and then you write about it so you need not worry about the implementation of the concept it's just a concept paper if someone who's uh, ready to in uh, uh, like to invest in that particular concept they would be like able to take this idea and maybe implement that idea the other options are like experimental uh, uh, research publication there is also like a survey based research publication like if you have uh, created an interesting survey about a particular data science topic or about a particular uh, uh, particular event that is happening you can understand about that particular survey you can do the analysis about that particular survey and then you can publish a paper about what insights that you have identified based on those surveys so research publication again is not only for people who are doing PhDs but anyone who is interested in a research career it can be very helpful the sixth option is becoming a technical reviewer so a lot of publications have uh, something called as technical reviewer so they generally pay uh, these technical reviewers in money or in credit which you can make use in order to buy books from these publications so by being a technical reviewer you, you get to learn about like the publication process you get to learn about like the the various work of the author by reading them in detail and providing some valuable feedback that will help in improving the uh, quality of the content that the publication is trying to produce so so being a technical reviewer is definitely a good a good uh, opportunity for you to increase your knowledge as well as to improve your profile if you are interested in being a technical reviewer i will provide a few links in the description where you can join as a technical reviewer or you can apply for a technical reviewer reviewer opportunity so it's a good opportunity to learn as well as make some money so these are all the various options so now having an, a good data science portfolio is okay 
but it is also equally important to increase the visibility of your work. So it doesn't matter if you have published, uh, let's say, 100 amazing blogs or if you have uh, like, uh, 50 amazing projects in your portfolio, if you are doing some amazing work on Tidal platform, it is not enough if you are not taking those to your uh, professional network. So it is like uh, it is there in the professional network where people would be able to uh, see and appreciate your work. So you need to make sure that you create visibility to your work. So how do you create visibility? The best way to create visibility is to make sure that you have a good uh, professional network. So you need to focus on building a professional network. You need to share uh, the contents that you are producing, the work that you are doing on your LinkedIn profile, let's say, which will be very useful for people uh, uh, who are trying to learn about it or it will be very useful for you to get feedback from other professionals. Also, what you can do is you can look into platforms such as uh, Tadl or uh, Reddit where you can, like, you can find various posts by people that if you think some of your work can be very helpful for any of them, you can provide or share your link on those platforms by which you are like, uh, creating a better visibility uh, for your work. So these are all some of the options which are very useful in order to increase the visibility of what amazing work that you are doing. On top of all these things that you have learned today, the other things that you need to do in order to increase your chances of getting hired or getting a better job opportunity is to create an impressive resume. It is important to have an impressive resume to ensure that all your work are being uh, put in your resume so that the potential recruiter can see what kind of work you are doing uh, like uh, outside of your work, like maybe in a particular platform or uh, uh, or general what kind of projects that you have in your data repository and you need to also have an portfolio website so if you are wondering about how to create an impressive resume and how to create an portfolio website for free you can look into the description i will provide a link to the video as well as the article i have written in detail about creating an impressive resume also how to create a portfolio website for free by making use of git pages in your job application, like most of the job, job applications, they will uh, ask you for uh, various uh, links, uh, like uh, your LinkedIn profile link, your uh, Reddit repository link, as well as any uh, personal website that you might have. So in those cases that like, you can provide all these links and it will be very useful for the uh, uh, recruiter to get to know more about you and uh, you are making their job easier and hence you have a better chance of being shortlisted for a particular job position. So these are all the various things I wanted to cover today. So that's it for now. Just on a final tip before signing off. So while building or while working on building a data science portfolio for yourself, do not wait for perfection. So you don't become perfect in the day one. So perfection happens over time. So do not wait for your project to become a perfect project. Do not wait for your blood to become a perfect blood. Do not wait until you have all the knowledge in order to mentor someone. So all you need to do is you need to get started and the learning that comes along the way will make you perfect in the future. So you need to understand that and you need to ensure that you do not wait for anything, but you are getting started right today. So today is the best day for you to get started with your data science portfolio. So that's it for today and uh, see you soon in another video. Apart from the YouTube videos, I also write a lot of uh, blogs. So if you are interested in uh, uh, reading from my blogs, uh, you can see the link in the description, which will take you to my uh, Medium profile, which has linked to all my uh, writings in data science. And if you are interested in receiving a monthly newsletter from me, I will provide the link in the description to join my monthly newsletter. That's it for now. See you in the another session and bye until then.